On this episode of Five Minutes of Cloud, we're going to talk about what it might take, some of the thought processes you might go through to take an application that you've already written and move it into a container environment. So I've got an application and I want to start using this new container model to actually get the best and greatest of the, the latest IT technology in, in play in my, in my enterprise, in my environment. So how do I go about doing that? Well, more than likely, even if I haven't built something for web scale, I've started to use one of the more modern frameworks for building my application. So uh, Ruby on Rails or uh, the latest now is uh, Mean Stack, uh, the Mongo Express, uh, Angular, and uh, Node.js uh, systems environment. But in, in reality, in any of those cases, it still breaks down to some of the basic uh, application deployment models, especially the web scale services application deployment models, where you have a model, which is usually a database or a data structure type service, um, some form of control logic, and then some, of view, some form of view and presentation logic. And there are lots of different versions versions of this general structure, uh, but you're going to end up with those basic pieces. And in the past, what you would have done is you would have started out with uh, either a physical server or a virtual machine, and you would have said, well, I'll build my database on my virtual machine, and yes, I'll talk to it through a database abstraction layer so that I can potentially split it apart in the future, and I'll write my control logic, uh, and then I'll actually embed this underneath a web server and probably a web server running a, a process manager or a systems manager. So, for example, the Ruby on Rails environment, I would probably have an Nginx or Apache web server. I would have um, a... Uh, um, uh, passenger uh, web service that actually enables the, the Ruby application to be run and to present data through that web server. The web server would also be there to provide the, the front end services, some of the view components that might not be control logic, uh, well, they live within the, the, the actual client's browser or something that the application like a, 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 a phone app or a mobile app might actually pull in to actually use and consume as a part of that application deployment. So those are the pieces that you would actually build out and you would build them in one monolithic bundle. And then maybe you would say, oh, I'll build my database needs to now be separated because it's starting to scale or I want to go to production. Um, and maybe I would actually start breaking out some of the control logic as a separate entity to things that are serving static content like images I might break out into, into different different entities. That same logic applies very well to containers. And, and, and actually, when you think about deploying into a container, the number one question is, can I make this service ephemeral? Can I make this something that if I delete or recreate it, it does not impact my application's running? So if the application wasn't written with that in mind, with that kind of segregation of data stays within the database, the state is separate from all of that, uh, there's some work that has to be done in the application. But once I start breaking that apart, the first thing I do is I say, okay, let me build my database somewhere else. Well, in the container world, one of the things you have to be aware of is if a container is truly ephemeral, I can stop it and restart it. That doesn't work well with most databases. There's a little bit of work that has to be done, at least on the storage layer, uh, to create persistent storage for that resource. Now, certainly you can run Mongo or MySQL or Postgres or, for that matter, probably even Oracle uh, within a containerized environment. Uh, but you just have to be aware that that storage probably needs to be persistent. Actually, I'm guaranteeing you it needs to be persistent if you want to keep your data around. Um, or you need to have a data service that is actually replicated so that deleting an instance uh, doesn't actually destroy the entire data set. It just means that some of the data that was replicated is gone and you have fewer replicas to work with. So there are a number of different models uh, within that space and that's something we'll discuss discover in a, in a future episode. But data is one thing, managing the persistence of data. So that's one area that you need to consider. The next area is my application itself. I'm gonna break that out and also put that into a container. Uh, that's probably the easier part of the whole the whole process because there are already container image models with like Apache Passenger or the, basically the Node stack um, and some of the services embedded in it with, with an Nginx front end, for example. Those components already exist and they might be completely appropriate for use and you might be able to just drop your application in and run. Uh, again, if you need to scale, this is where you need to start thinking about some of the container management tools that sit on top of the individual containers. Just having a container isn't enough. Now I need to start modeling how my application scales. And this is where something like the Kubernetes pod plus service controller plus replication controller model 
uh, is actually very useful from an operational perspective. Because as long as, again, that application state is separated, I have my database separate from my, my actual container, I can look at scaling those individual application engines, even if they're handling both static and dynamic content, but I can scale them out and put a load balancing component in front of that using the Kubernetes engines. Um, there are others that also support a similar kind of function, basically adding that additional load balancing thing. Uh, the uh, Mesosphere uh, uh, DCOS tools, for example, would be another area where you can actually do that. And you'd start to build this individualized model of how your service gets deployed. And in reality, that's the big shift, is thinking, how am I going to deploy my application? How do I decompose what was a single entity into multiple container environments? And can those individual container components scale up and, uh, up and out? So we've looked at the, the, the data store, considering some of the aspects of that, specifically how am I going to manage my persistent data, or can I come up with a different data engine, uh, like a Mongo or something like that, that can actually replicate the data so that an individual node disappearing is not a failure in my entire environment. And then I need to look at the, the scaling component, uh, even if it's just one or two way active active kind of scaling, so that I can update my code base uh, for my application and my application controllers. And those are the things that you need to think about, just the basic things you need to think about when, when taking an application that you may be written in a virtual machine and a single entity virtual machine and migrating it into the container space. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. In addition, if you want to stay apprised of the latest ongoing updates in the cloud space, uh, sign up for our Twitter feed and our mailing list. We also update you on upcoming webinars and classes that we provide.